Good evening. This is Pragati Pandey and she is Shivani Sahai. We are from New Era Progressive School, Class 11, Science. Life on Earth is impossible, as we know, without the sun's radiation and the gases in the atmosphere. Atmospheric gases helps to trap the sun's radiation, making the life possible on Earth. At present, there is a growing concern that the increase in these gases, like CO2, will result in global warming with irreversible environmental changes. Today, about 80% of the total energy consumption is from fossil fuels. When we burn fossil fuels, carbon reacts with oxygen to become the greenhouse gas carbon dioxide. Increasing fossil fuel use is thus followed by increase in man-made CO2 emission. We need to slow down or reduce global warming. The impact of climate change is one of the biggest and most important challenges faced by our society today. So this is exactly what our pro project model aims for. It is a prototype descriptive model which goes under the name of carbon capture and storage technology. It is the most promising solution that we have for our challenges. The recent emission scenarios have indicated that the carbon dioxide emissions should be reduced by 50 to 80 percent if we have to control the Earth's temperature rising above 2 to 2.4 degrees Celsius above the pre-industrial levels. CCS promises to reduce 90 percent of the carbon dioxide emission from large stationary sources. Carbon capture and storage, or CCS, is an important geoengineering solution to climate change. The idea is simple. We capture carbon dioxide, compress it into a liquid, and then store it or dispose it deep underground geological formations, which can be confining cap rock layer nearly up to 7,000 to 8,000 feet below. Saline aquifers, which contains undrinkable salt waters and depleted oil and gas fields. Now, one of the most important questions that arises is that how do we store CO2 safely underground? We do so by imitating the trapping methods used by the earth to store oil and gas or to capture the oil and gas deep underground for billions of years and with the technology which is being used by oil and gas refinery from decades. Now the next important thing to be noted is that how do we store or how much storage space do we have? Potential CO2 storage sites exist all over the world with careful site selection and monitoring the safety of carbon dioxide storage sites increases over time. This time will lead to switch to sustainable form of energy to, of the future. Now, let us have a look on a power plant located in West Virginia, USA, namely Montana Power Plant. This power plant has two major units for CCS or carbon capture and storage. The first one is carbon injection well and the second one is the absorber column. Now let us know how do we capture carbon dioxide. There are three methods of capturing CO2. The first one is pre-combustion capture. In this, in this type of combustion the coal is combined with oxygen to produce a gas known as syngas. It constitutes of carbon monoxide and hydrogen. When this is reacted with water, it produces carbon dioxide and hydrogen. We can safely capture carbon dioxide. However, hydrogen is used to drive the turbines to generate the electricity. The second method of carbon capture is post-combustion capture. In this type of capture, 
the coal is burned as normal. But before the gas passes through the chimney, it goes to an absorber column which is filled with a liquid solvent known as amine. It absorbs CO2 so that it cannot enter the atmosphere. After that, a superheated steam is passed through the chimney. With this process, carbon dioxide is released from the mine so that we can capture carbon dioxide safely. The third method is oxy fuel method. In this type of method, nitrogen is separated from oxygen with the help of an air separator. Then, oxygen is combined with cold fuel to produce carbon dioxide and water vapor. This type of combination is then used for turbines to generate electricity. After then, water vapor is condensed, cooled down and removed so that we can capture carbon dioxide safely. Now let's see how the CO2 that is captured is transported. The CO2 captured is first converted into liquid under certain high pressures. This liquefied CO2 is then, once in a state, transferred or it is then sent to the suitable storage sites. Now, if the suitable storage site from where the CO2 has to be injected is very near or the amount of CO2 that, is, that has to be sent is not much, trucks are used. In case the amount of CO2 are in large volume or the distance of the suitable storage site is very far off, we use pipelines. These pipelines can be extended to thousands of kilometers. Now let's move to storage. Washout of geology is required to store CO2 underground. For this, let's go inside the earth. For this, we need porous and non-porous rock. Pores hold the CO2 in the rocks, allowing it to move through the rocks. Now, to prevent the CO2 from escaping, an impermeable layer of rock is needed. So we need two components, one of which is reservoir rock and the other is non-porous rock. Once the CO2 is trapped under the cap rock, three additional mechanisms, residual trapping, Resolution trapping and mineral trapping ensure that the safety of the CO2 to the storage sites increase over time. How does this mechanism work? Some of the CO2 injected in the pores simply can't move even under high pressure. This is residual trapping. A portion of the CO2 dissolves into the salt water. This is dissolution trapping. The CO2 rich water is heavier than the surrounding liquids and migrates downwards where it may react to form minerals such as those found in limestone. This is mineral trapping. Now to ensure that the CO2 storage site functions as it should, a rigorous monitoring process begins at the reservoir selecting stage and continues for as long as required. The well cap rock and adjacent cap rock formations are monitored for changes in pressure and CO2 concentration levels. All of the systems ensure that the response times are swift and decisive action can be taken whenever necessary. Monitoring continues even after the well is closed to make sure that the CO2 injected is stored safely and permanently underground. Now, one major question that arises is when coal produces almost 40% of the total emissions that are resulting in global warming, then why can't we just simply replace coal by the renewable sources like solar and wind? Well, that's not that simple. Every day, for household need, we burn on an average 10 kgs of coal. This is a huge amount. Coal is present in efficiency and hence it's cheap. Due to this reason, coal matters to us. We cannot simply just avoid coal. Population is rising day by day and in around 10 to 15 years, 
it may reach up to billions or it may increase by one or two billions. To meet this much energy demand, just using the renewable sources is not enough. We have to consider a suitable mix of energies that is environmentally acceptable. It is a global matter. Everything cannot be done so quickly. We need to go step by step forward. And for this, CCS is really a promising solution to our challenge. Now, the second most important thing to consider is the cost. Implementing CCS to the older power plants is generally expensive. But if we adopt CCS for the new power plants, it's much cheaper. And the other factors on which the cost of CCS is dependent are the choice of capture technology, the type of fossil fuel used, percentage of carbon capture, and the distance to and type of geological formations. Large scale deployment of carbon capture and storage technology have ways to go. We cannot simply avoid all the coal-based power plants. For this, we need decades and decades. What we can really do is to build up a suitable mix of technology. However, CCS is not a new technology. It has been used since 1996. Many power plants were set up which were based on this technology. Countries like Alberta, Nigeria, Canada, etc. have CCS based power plants. Today, the cost of installing this unit exceeds its benefits. But innovations are yet to come. This is just the beginning. We can do a lot more for it. CCS is an approved and tested technology. It is accepted by many of the bodies like international energy agencies. It is accepted worldwide like in countries Canada, Algeria and Norway for long-term CO2 storage and enhanced oil recovery. We can see that many of the developing nations are adopting it. So why should India be left behind? This was all about a project model which was representing carbon capture and storage technology. We have made this project in order to spread awareness among the power plants. Still, there are many which do not have any idea about this technology. If we adopt this, we are surely going to get benefit in the upcoming future. Because we don't want to protect the environment. We want to create a world where environment doesn't need protection. Thank you. Thank you.